good afternoon from Yami B TV. Wishing you all well today. Uh, just thought I'd get back to you and answer some of the comments uh, that have been coming in in recent uh, days as well. I tried to catch up uh, as much as I can. Uh, we're talking about more the institutionalization and that kind of stuff, and plus a couple of jokes here and there. Uh, but loving you all very, very much. Um, yes, I liked um, Jason Armstrong. Uh, I'm sure I was with Jason uh, 30, 40 years ago uh, as youngsters in, in care or in an institution somewhere. I think we went through that, isn't it, Jason? I do, in fact, know you. Uh, that one there, the pessimist always looks out the window seeing bars, but the optimist always looks out and sees the stars. Brilliant one, boy. I like that one there, Jason. Andy Spencer, you're cracking, you are. Felton came up against the big boys in Wandsworth and got battered at football. Reminds me of that time when the police came in to play us in Woodhill in um, 97, 98 or something like that. I think Paul Paul was there then. <laughs> Paul, 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 Paul. <laughs> but, um, yeah, we battered the police. Uh, that day it was about 9-1. I think everyone was just hyped up for it. I think I scored from a corner with a flick and I think it grazed, grazed my hair and went in. Yeah. Um, Mitchell Greenhow, my boy Mitch, man. Thank you, man. Baby steps, I know. Uh, Tomo, excellent, excellent. I'm sure that's a dumb main family in Wales. I can't remember sometimes. But uh, the one thing they can never take away from you is your heart uh, that's made in you know, that can be set in stone. You know, once the, you've got the goodness in there somewhere, you always find a way out of the darkness, I believe. Um, Chris O'Neill, big up, my boy. Um, yeah, that question, Neil Peace. Yes, my boy, great one. Uh, how do straight goers uh, get on while they're doing, uh, if they get a life sentence, how do they cope? Is it any different to habitual criminals like I was and many others? Uh, I'm going to do a video on that. Very good one there, Neil. Uh, funny, it's strange, but I'll tell you from now, the straight goers seem to have accepted things a bit more for some reason and, and come to terms with it and that. But I'm going to break that down for you, Neil. Funny, good, great question, that. Um, Luke Cook, thank you, my boy. We've all got our anxiety uh, and stresses and everyday thinking and worries and concerns, my boy. Thanks, Luke. You're a good man as well. Um, what was that? Yorkshireman. Yeah, that was a good one. Coping with technology. Uh, big man, I know, I found that really difficult, especially with the injuries now with my fingers as well. But I, I, a lot of times since I've been out, what I was told about social media and going into it, um, Yorkshireman, is is like I, I was being conned as well because people said, oh, that's that, that's that, that, that. So you miss it. But then further down the line, when you learn more, you think, well, why did you tell me the wrong way of looking at things? Kind of, you know, like you it's like he was trying to not let me see the truth and that kind of stuff. I've had to learn the hard way on that. Made some terrible mistakes on social media because why? I don't know. <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Yeah. But this guy here, Mark Quinn. Right. Let's not get this twisted. Um, he broke it down beautifully about being set in our ways for so long that to come out and change that consistent way of doing things in those environments, in that bad life. You chop down all the old and you begin growing up the new so that when you become used to it, it becomes more familiar and normal. So, so, so great stuff, Mark Quinn. And then what was the other one? Uh, yes, Mark Quinn again. Brilliant, my boy. Feel like that talented sportsman in there. Like great, great, great uh, uh, men and, and ladies with talents behind the door. Seen that with my own eyes. You know, artist, you know, creative, you know, reading, you know, studying. You know, they've all, everybody's got something that they could not, they could do without going to prison. You know, there was a better option inside of them and a realisation as we, we, we work it all out is that we were worth so much more than that, uh, Mark Quinn. And you being talented as well, spotted it as well. It was wasting your, your life, wasting those abilities that we think are not really all that, really. But they are and they can help others as well. Um, Kate Ward, yeah, definitely gets really tiring sometimes, I know, but I just like to, you, you know how I am, Kate, anyway, because you know that I just, you can't feel great every day, you just humanly possible, so there's no point 
in me coming up here and saying, yeah, yeah, everything's fine and da -da -da, when you're not feeling it, you're better off just being how you feel. Exactly. Well done, Kate. Thanks for all your support as well. Um, James McGregor. Yeah, the football days, boy. You know, they score me twinkle toes a little bit, but I always describe myself as an average footballer. I think when I was, I, I think the vision and the touch and that kind of stuff and, you know, the swiveling around here and there, you know, the reading of the game, I think it got better as I got older in some ways, but except that when you're younger, the magnet of the ball being stuck to your feet, uh, but saw many, many better footballers than me in there. Um, JS, you are absolutely magnificent. Uh, the, the, your feedback on that last bit, you, when you finished your 16 years, uh, exactly what I was talking about this morning, and you said this the other day, that you came out, it was just so confusing that you just wanted to go back. Sad, 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 you know, because the coping, the feelings, the used to not, not used to this and used to that. We've talked about it before, about um, uh, you get used to being in your own space and everything, that you feel a little bit alien. That's why, you know, for those who are short on confidence and self-esteem and, you know, large groups when they come out and that they feel totally, you know, out of, place and that which can make it even more more harder you know with, for me you know free spirit and others you know who can engage and things like that but you can still miss the point on what is actually how many times i've had to be prepped since i've been out about i'm reading into the wrong thing at the wrong time you know when it they meant something totally different we're going to get more into that wayne hamilton you take care too boy uh jammers you too uh but the jono fella uh winston green bloody hell boy yeah i missed you the other day i know you walked past while i was at the train station um but yeah they wrapped me up there in reception and that geezer that you was talking about he was one of them i know and and the thing about it when i was going through reception uh jono uh the jono fella i was thinking oh no because i've just come from scrubs block i think and then I went there and I was expecting, because of what I did in the other job, when you get there, you know that they're going to play about you, especially in them days. Uh, but I can tell you one thing, I cried like a baby when they took off the toenail. Uh, but um, Jarvis dead, yeah, yeah, big up. It's, uh, what a, what a dead, because you laughed at it, Jarvis. But the excellent thing you said there about just existing. So when we know when, long term as a finishing off and they come down from the A's to the B's and then you bump into them in the locals and then you see that blank stare you know where they've been lost for a long long time you can't see it's like they're looking right through you I know scary I know um William Frey definitely going to answer that for you my boy um yeah the worst conditions yeah we're going to get round to that as well but Kurt Webb you're killing me about the Birmingham thing how did I forget as a football man the Blues and the Villas uh, I'm forgetting about that while I was up there because uh, I always thought yeah but no, in fact I was right isn't it because Villa is Birmingham it's in there and that obviously the rivalry and all that I'll take your I'll take your think your take on that for now but then there's going to be Ems who's going to come in and say hold on Yami you, you dismissing the Villa that's what I'm saying but um, no, that as well. Everyday love. Um, oh, Z Z, yeah, my stories are better than my singing. I have to agree there. Um, Monji, a good song helps. Yeah, it always does. Uh, Birmingham City Football Club. Uh, yeah, you as well. You was killing me about Ellsbury. Honestly, in the first time we went there, you know what it felt like. You know, like when you're a new beginner and you're going into the dinner queue and you don't want to leave, you're looking at the corner of your eyes for the characters and all that kind of thing. Very, very daunting, isn't it? And then in later life now, when you get over those little nervous bits, because you always feel nervous when you first go to prison or somewhere new for the first time, unless you're seasoned, habitual, you know, you've been everywhere. <laughs> but um, yeah, definitely. And then you, 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 you're in the dinner queue, say, and you're by, by the surgery and you're not really talking, but everyone's talking, yeah, you're right, you're on Dave, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're seeing all that kind of stuff, but you're noticing but then further down the line you're the guy that becomes talking to everybody and then you see the newbies coming in and you know exactly what they're feeling and you kind of have a little chuckle and you think to yourself oh you got to go through that as well you need someone to talk to and blah 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 you know I was good at that um Andrew Marsden trust me happiness my boy well done but I say happiness is a state of mind uh and love is all there is uh where there's suffering uh there follows relief. Love that one, you know. 
Love is all there is. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Daniel Ogden buzzing. Yes, Dave Number. Yes, I used to sing quite regularly in there as well. I know. Um, Nick Healy, <clears throat> big, 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 big respect to you. TG, TG down there in uh, bloody, bloody, blah. <clears throat> Do I do request? Uh, I'll let you know on that one. But I'm known for doing a bit of a karaoke. So you can hold me for that one there, boy. Uh, yeah, Grant Bowen. Yeah, brilliant. Strength for strength. Uh, that's what it feels like to me at the moment. Um, Jay Dartmore safe. Uh, Rhea Hayes. Wow. Uh, top, top, top lady from Canada. Uh, very into her, uh, the human behaviour, psychological stuff. Had great support from her over the months. And she talks about the incarceration creates isolation and the social isolation creates deterioration with mental health, etc., etc. And the big thing there is definitely Rhea Hayes. It's not set up for success, you know, that 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 kind of that life and and, and the way the treatment in there and the conditions and the isolation and all that. It's just not like that. You can't just come out uh, long or short, worse as it gets longer. But you know that it's there, that that conditioning that you go through is traumatic, scarful and and, and et cetera, et cetera. Thank you for that. All right. Um, Jay don't know. Paul Warwick, yeah, the faith, my boys, uh, Dave Farrier, um, Farrah, um, as well. So we're going to get round to uh, the godly stuff. Any tree, I'm still waiting. Yeah, let me know what passage you would like me to read because I'm going to have a playlist with my spiritual stuff up and godly stuff coming very, very soon. Um, that, uh, Andy Fritzel, yeah, that was a funny one, boy. Uh, Rail Miles, uh, you could have made a fortune, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I know, I've been travelling loads, it knackers you out. Um, Steve Blackburn, them jokes, boy, are killing me. And Patrick Mar Moran, yeah, thank you. Scarred by institutions forever, Patrick. It don't matter in which form, I understand what you mean now. It's allowed, we're allowed to be in some ways, but what do we do with what we know, where we're scarred, and what we can do with that kind of thing to change uh, the methods of, of, of those that thought pattern there uh, and the stuff that, you know, you're scarred from. In fact, that made any sense, Patrick. <laughs> I'm trying to get through many here, but love my boy. Victor B, man. Yeah, you spoke about great one, man, about the, the, um, going from shillings to pence to pounds and the decimal points to change in money and the confusion there when you don't know. I'm telling you, man, I've been, I've been stung a lot of times since I've been out where I don't know what I'm doing with what, with the money and all that kind of stuff. Yep, I hear what you're saying, Victor B. Big up down here in southwest London, my boy. Um... And the adjusting, and the adjusting to normal people, strange, isn't it? Because you're so used to being around negativity and darkness and danger and adrenaline that when you reckon, when you start getting used to good, good people, it's, it's such a different kind of feeling with less pressure and everything. I wish, not now, because I'm doing it now, but I wish that I would have known that that's the safest bet would have been to be with the, you know, the pe the, the the humans that you know don't look at things the way that I was taught and blah 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 because you learn much quicker uh, thing which I'm finding out now the more goodness there is around you and everything the more you thrive and the more sense of relief with your feelings alone uh, great stuff fit to be right so that was, a job I was there one more no I think that's about it for now oh and yeah violence my boy uh yeah, valuable to probation and a message for the youth. Very, very well thing. Because when I was younger, they didn't have so much like hardened criminals coming round to do the talks. There was the odd one or two, but mostly it was youth workers who hadn't been to jail and that kind of stuff. So when they're delivering the message, it didn't have that same kind of power. But you know, once you've lived it, once you felt it, once you know, you can really help a lot of others. And like you, violence, I wish there was someone like me and you that could have just uh, spoken to me and broke it down bit by bit about the thoughts and the process about growing up being taught by this one and that one about this is the right way to do it go and steal there go and ruin someone's life and then, then, then living off that kind of stuff you needed someone to make you understand that the game you're in is not real it's not real you needed someone to understand some, someone to show you that that bracelet and that chain and this one and that what it actually means and to to for where you're going to look for self-esteem and glory hunting and that kind of thing and whatever else um so that was that as well so violence yeah got that well well done my boy where is street life he's gone missing human being uh, i know southwest london's still about and um 
I think, yeah, I think that's about, I think that's about it for today. So any more questions, I'm going to get back to you. But um, sending light and love, Marina, light and love, special, very special. Love you all. See you soon.